Mm. But why would this jinn be afraid of the name of Jesus, not the name of Allah? And so I just shouted and I said, there is no God. Forget this. You know, that I have wasted my life. And I thought, okay, God been trying to kill me. They have sent this guy now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Welcome today. Welcome to this Testimony Tuesday. And today we're going to continue with the testimony of Pastor Afshin Javed, right? Who was a former Hezbollah fighter. And he had an encounter where he tried to curse a Christian. If you haven't watched that video, please watch it up above that's part one then you come back to this video so he tried to curse this christian and then we saw what happened he found the demon coming for him and then he, he heard a voice saying use the name of jesus right you can watch that in the part one video watch that then come back here so today we're going to see what happened after he saw the power in the name of jesus which caused his confusion we saw that in the first video now we're going to see what happened after that from his point of confusion to where he actually came face to face with jesus christ and what jesus told him hallelujah so i'll be back at the end of this video and watch till the end because there's something interesting even after he met jesus okay so i'll be back at the end Amen. came out and I said, I formed a sentence without thinking about it. And I said, Jesus, if you are true, show me yourself. And before I was finished with that sentence, that spirit was gone. Hallelujah. Now, of course, praise God. Praise God. Of course, I'm, I'm a Muslim and that is not how I converted. That was the beginning of my confusion. <laughs> I was, I was no, very... No, this is, this is important. This, yeah, is, yeah, mean, this is the beginning of your confusion. Confusion, why? Because, uh, I mean, the, the, say, the demons must run at the name of Allah, but it didn't. It must run according to the uh, studies that I have done. It must have run by all these uh, scriptures I used, but it didn't. Why would the name of Jesus help me? And this question just grab hold of me and continue to haunt me literally day and night so what happened was i thought that night uh, okay i should never ask that question because allah allah knows it all mm. so forget this because if you ask this question in islam they teach us don't ask too many questions if you ask question you will go crazy or you become an infidel mm. so i thought and I said, I remember my teachers teaching us that. So I said to the, uh, myself, because I, I asked my teachers, what questions are those questions that we should not ask? Mm -hmm. And he said to me, we don't know, don't ask. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but that night I thought this is one of those questions. Mm. That why would this jinn be afraid of the name of Jesus, not the name of Allah? So I said, I will never ask that question. And so I got up in the morning the next day, and I used to do the call of prayer. If you have been in a Muslim country, you know, they, they stand on top and then they call the prayer. But the first verse of that prayer, the call for prayer, is Allahu Akbar. And the moment I sing out Allahu Akbar, I hear a voice, this time not audible, but within my soul, inside of me. Mm -hmm. And that voice asked me a question. I said, Allah, Akbar, Allah is great. And the question, then why would Jesus help you? And I literally physically jumped. And I thought, what was that question? And so every time... I would pray and fast, and I would just speak or read the Quran for the next uh, two weeks. The name of Jesus would come to me. I would open the Quran, the name of Jesus would jump out, and I couldn't stop it. And I said, okay, I don't understand this. Everywhere, when I wanted to pray, when I wanted to eat, when I wanted to, to do anything I wanted, when I read the Quran, the name of Jesus would jump out of the pages. I'm like, I didn't know what to do. Wow. So, uh, and I, I, 
uh, said Glory I cried God. out fasting and praying for two weeks. I cried out and I said, God, show me the way, the truth. And I thought there are many ways of climbing a mountain. You can climb many different ways, but always come to the same peak. And I thought maybe God is one, but you can go to him many, many different ways. ways. <laughs> so I said, maybe he has a different way for me. And I asked him to show me the way, the truth. And after two weeks of praying, no answer. And I, and I just was totally devastated because I had poured everything out. Yes, yes. And so I just shouted and I said, there is no God. Forget this. You know, that I have wasted my life. You know, because if God exists, he can see my heart and he knew I love him. Yes. I loved him so much. I volunteered at age 14 to go walk on mines. Yes. I wanted to walk on landmines because I thought I want to die for Allah. By age 15 and a half, when I came out of Iran, I participated ah, in glory. six executions. I said, whether it is to take a life or give my life, I've done it. It wasn't enough. I read the Quran through and through every 10 days. I would fast. I would pray more than it was needed or asked for. But it wasn't enough. You, you confused me with the name of Jesus, and you refused to answer me and show me the way. So you're I'm, done. I'm done. I'm done. I want to go do my own thing. I mean, the day of judgment, if you judge me, you are not just because it's your fault that I'm in this boat, you know? I thought, who better to blame than God himself, right? <laughs> Adam tried that too, right? It's the white woman you gave me, right? <laughs> you, you, you know, you know so, we're, we're, we're laughing, but what, you know what, what is really interesting to me is here you are, you're an honest seeker of truth absolutely you, you are someone who is like god whoever you are whatever you are i want the real deal absolutely and, and and this is something that i think is is just really important for us as western believers to understand there are people who are really looking for the truth absolutely and you are one of them please keep going so i uh, I didn't expect this, but suddenly the whole room filled with the presence of God. And I knew, I knew that God was there. And I, uh, I knew two things about him. One, that he's a holy God. And one, that he's a just God. And I knew simultaneously two things about myself. I knew that I am unholy and I'm unjust. And it didn't matter how much I had prayed and what I had done. I am unholy and I'm unjust. And I thought to myself, according to the scriptures of Quran, Allah only comes to wipe the infidels off the face of the earth. And because I questioned his existence, and because I elevated myself to a place of God saying, I will decide myself for yeah. my life, he has come to wipe me off the face of the earth. And while in that, I ran so to the corner. So you're thinking that presence is still Allah. I, I thought it's God. I knew it's God. Yeah. But I thought it's the same one. So yeah. I run to the corner of the room and I start crying out, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. But knowing he cannot forgive me because he's just. How can he forgive me? He's holy. He cannot. And I just cried out like a, like a child that asked for forgiveness from a father that has absolutely no mercy. And I thought, he cannot forgive me because he is just. How can he forgive me? And right at that point, I felt a touch on my shoulder and a voice that said, I forgive you. And the moment he said that, I felt as if, at, at the moment I heard those words, it was as if all the sins in my life had just vanished. And there was no, no, absolutely no evidence of them. And I didn't understand because I said, how can that be? We say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah who is merciful and gracious, but we don't know if we are forgiven till the day of judgment. I said, who are you that forgives me and I feel forgiven today? And he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Somebody better shout right now. Huh. Keep going, brother. Keep going. So, I said, I said, I don't understand. I know these are powerful words, but I've never heard them. I don't know what they mean. I said, what is your name? And he said, Jesus Christ, the living God. And it was as if someone just took every bone from my body. I fell to the ground. I started to weep because I, I knew I belonged to him. I knew I was his. But more than that, he was mine. And I didn't understand how that could be possible. How can a human being possess God? Jesus. 
but I knew he belongs to me and I belong to him. Yes, yes, yes. And he was just the most marvelous thing and I just wept for some two hours before he just said, look up and I looked up and I saw this TV screen like in the midair from all different nations and generations of people and I could see everyone seeing it and I said, I live among all these sinners. I live among all these sinners. And he says, Afshin, how easy did I forgive you? And I said, immediately, and forcing me, he said, as easy as drinking water. <laughs> and I said, no, 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 even easier than drinking water. And he said, I can forgive them as easy as I've forgiven you. Glory to but God. who's going to tell them? I said, I will. <laughs> and he says, go. So, so I, I did the dumbest thing in my life. What did you do? I got up and ran out of the door when Jesus was still standing in the room, you know? You got up and ran out? Yeah, because I wanted to go and tell people. <laughs> so I went to the first place I knew. I ran to the Muslim friends and brothers that gathered in the mosque. And I, I didn't, I had not, uh, sorry to say to all the, the Bible schools, I had not studied the Bible. I hadn't even seen a Bible. Uh -huh. Wow. I went to the mosque. I didn't know Bible exists. I ran to the mosque with one message. When they came to me, said, Brother, what are you going to teach us about the Quran, about the Hadith, uh -huh. about the Prophet? I said, No, 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 no. Forget Allah, forget Muhammad, forget the Quran. I just saw Jesus Christ. And he said to me, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life, and I can forgive all. That's all I knew about Jesus. But I knew that's enough. And of course, it didn't go very well. They tried to kill me. In jail? Yes. But I'm still here. They didn't succeed. Every time they tried to kill me in jail, more miracles happened. And as a result of those miracles, more Muslims gave their life to Jesus. Wow. You know, we want, we want conversion without paying the price. Yeah. Conversion happens the best way is through miracles. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we don't understand. The missionary that is sent is the miracle. They try to kill you. Mm -hmm. Okay, So I had no idea there is a Bible. Okay. They kicked me out of the mosque. So I would come outside the mosque and I would sit there. And I would uh, wait for them to finish their prayer and come out. And then they would say, uh, the, you know, Muslims, you know, they want to win you back to Islam. Brother, why did you leave Islam? This, that. And then I would tell them stories about Jesus. But I didn't know where these stories are coming to my mind. And I didn't know if they are true or not, honestly. Wow. And so one day I thought to myself, I don't know if these stories are true. Uh, but it's okay. It's for the for glory of God. <laughs> and then I heard this voice inside me. And the voice said, I am the God of all truths. I need no lies to be glorified with. And I trembled inside and I said, I don't know. I don't know with this, what, how these stories come to my mind. And I, I don't know. Send me a Bible. I will read and I will tell those stories. And then, of course, uh, the next morning, the evening and the next morning, a guy stands in front of me in jail for murder section. Now, the murder section had three major gates. I don't know how he has passed through those gates. He stands and he's looking at me funny. And I thought, okay, they have been trying to kill me. They have sent this guy now. So I take guard, actually, to defend myself. And he's an Indian background. So I speak Hindi to him. I said, what do you want? What's the matter with you kind of thing? What's the matter? And he just tilted his head gently, closed his eyes and opened his eyes and he reached from his back and gave me a book. He says, this is what you asked for. This is for you. And the book he gave me had nothing written on it. Mm -hmm. But the moment I looked at it, I knew it's a Bible. I was so excited. I grabbed it out of his hand. I ran to my room without thanking the guy. And I kissed it because... You know, as a Muslim, they do that. And mm -hmm. I do that three times. And I'm like, wow, what a powerful God. I prayed last night. I get the, the book in the morning. Wow. Next day, delivery. 
<laughs> you know, this is way before Amazon or any other. And when I opened, I realized I cannot, this is another language I cannot read. And I was like, oh, I cannot read this. And, um, oh, I should have been specific and say <laughs> what language. But in, in, in a Muslim culture, the book itself is holy. So uh -huh. it, it, it's very precious to us. Mm -hmm. so I said, God, thank you for sending me this, but I cannot read this. Can you send me a Farsi one? And I'll wait for it tomorrow, I said. Oh, wow. Because now I know, you know, my expectation has gone high. And then he says to me, no, read this. And I said, but I can't. He said, read. I said, but I can't. And the third time he says, read. And I thought, you know, God should know everything, but somehow he doesn't know. But I, you know, I still come from an Islam background, Muslim background, and and God is very unstable in Islam. So mm -hmm. if you get him mad, he can strike you dead anytime, you know. And so I thought, I don't want to make God mad, but I cannot read. Maybe I should show him that I cannot read. And the place that I had opened, I looked down and tried to show him that I cannot read. And I began to read and I began to understand. Yeah. And when I finished that paragraph, I thought to myself, okay, Afshin, you have been in jail for too long. You have gone crazy. Not only you think you can read this, you can understand, but you think this is your story because this is not that what you're reading was written thousands of years before. I didn't know how long, but what that's your story, which happened to you two weeks ago, and it's not possible. So I thought for the first time, I have evidence that I've gone crazy with all these things, you know. So I went to this guy in my cell who could read other languages, and I said, can you read from here to here? And he read, and I said, does it mean this? And he jaw drops, and he says, how do you understand English? I said, is that English? He said, yeah. I said, I don't know. I just do. Wow. And the passage that I had opened up to was Isaiah chapter 6 in the year then Isaiah died, I saw the Lord seated on the throne, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim, two, each with six wings. With two, they covered their faces. With two, they covered their feet. With two, they flew and one called to the other, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the house was filled with the smoke and they shook the, the temple. And I said, woe is unto me. I am a man of unclean lips. And I live amongst the people of unclean lips. At, the, at that, the chair the seraphim, Flew unto me with a coal that he had taken from the altar with it. He touched my lips and he said, See, this has touched your lips, your sins taken away, your guilt atoned for. At that, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. Uh, I, I literally have gone around the world just saying how Jesus loves people because I don't have anything else to offer. I, silver or gold, I do not have. But you have the essential. <laughs> the name you, of Jesus you Christ. Have the name of Jesus of Nazareth and the work. I, I think we ought to just give the Lord a praise. I, uh. Praise the Lord. Wow. Uh, I believe you're touched by what you just watched and what you just witnessed. Uh, these are true real life events, amen. So I'm just going to break it down with scripture. But what I want you to notice there is how the love of God, you know, the love of God cannot be hidden. It cannot be kept back. And you know what? Next week, I'm going to show you what took place. Because remember, all this that took place was in prison. He was still in prison when he, when he heard the, the voice saying to him, use the name of Jesus. And he was still in prison when he met Jesus. And even after his conversion, he was still in prison. But how he was set free from prison was 
another supernatural occurrence. And I'll share that next week as, as the part three. We've got to see that, how you are set free. But let's just have a look at some of the scriptures here. So this guy, you can tell, like uh, the interviewer said to him there, the man of God said, he was seeking for truth and he was seeking for truth. And I just want to share with you a scripture here. It's in John chapter 6. And Jesus was the one who was speaking, right? John chapter 6, verse number 44. And it says, No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. So you can see that the Father was really after this uh, young man. He was a young man at that time. Now he's a, he's a, he's a grown man. Pastor Afshin Javid was in his late teens. But God was really after him, even in prison. And he just found him in that place. And he met Jesus Christ. And from there, he was forgiven. You know, he was forgiven instantaneously. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But what I want you to see is that even after, before he even met Jesus, right? Let's just rewind a bit. Before he even had that encounter with Jesus, he went back to the mosque and he con tried to continue as business as usual. And he tried to call that call out for prayer. But he, he heard that was the Holy Spirit speak to him. That's the Father who was drawing him to Jesus to say, if uh, Allah is greater, why then did Jesus come and help you? So that thing kept on. That was what he said was his confusion. And the name of Jesus, we know from uh, Philippians 2, there is no name above the name of Jesus. Isn't it? At the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. So this is what had him caught up. And from there, he was resigned from, uh, he was, I think he was planning to become an atheist. He thought, okay, forget it. This God is not righteous. He confuses me with the name of Jesus. But then we see what happened after that two-week fasting and prayer, which he did. This is when Jesus Christ appeared to him. Hallelujah. And the word of God says that he, he will appear a second time to all those who love his appearing, isn't it? So Jesus Christ appeared to him and then he thought instantaneously, he thought, I'm unholy, I'm unrighteous because he saw this light, this bright light, this presence. And he thought immediately he had to be killed according to what he understood. But he felt so unrighteous. But what I want you to notice, he shared this testimony many times and every time he shares it, it's the exact same. And he's almost in tears every time he shares it, even up to 30 years later that it is. And he, he said, Jesus just touched him on his shoulder and said, I forgive you. Said, Let me show you where that is in scripture. Let's go to Acts. Amen. Praise the Lord. Acts 26. Not to say it's not important to ask for forgiveness, but this is how easy. Like he said, he's written a book as easy as drinking water. Even easier than drinking water. That's how God is ready to forgive you. Look at this. Acts 26 verse number 18. This was what the Apostle Paul said, Jesus said to him. He said, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. So to receive forgiveness of sins. He just received. <laughs> he received forgiveness of sins. And according to his religion, he said that uh, they are taught that you'll only know if you're forgiven on the day of judgment. But he instantaneously felt that he was forgiven and he said, who are you that can forgive me? And I feel forgiven and I feel that power has come onto me. And he said, I am the way, the truth and the life. And that is scripture right there. John 14 verse number 6. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And then he said, after that, he asked him and he said, who are you? And he said, I am Jesus Christ, the living God. Hallelujah. You can't separate the Father and the Son. Jesus is God. And from there, that's when he said, yeah, that encounter, he saw the screens. And then he said, what must I do? When Jesus showed him, said, hey, these people are all in sin. Then he said, there's no one to send. Then he said, who, shall, who will go? And he said, I will go. And he said, he left Jesus in the room. Imagine, that's how you can see this man really is so passionate and zealous. Like last week I said, people can have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. So now he was in the right way in the knowledge. He went straight back to the place. I think of the testimony of Apostle Paul, who was Saul, who went back to preach to those people who he was uh, together. And he was terrorizing Christians, but he went immediately back. And that's what happened with Paul. People were amazed to say, this is the guy who came and get letters to persecute Christians. Now he's coming back to preach Christianity to us. This is the power and the love of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So just have a look at that. Even the encounter, he was blessed with a Bible. You know, Matthew, let's have a look at Matthew. He said he prayed for a Bible because he didn't know the Bible. He only knew one scripture. That's why I always say, with the things of God, you don't need to know much. You just need to know Jesus. You just need to know even one word and it will carry you. 
He just knew Jesus Christ, forgave him, and he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And he was willing to run with that and preach that. And that's the simple gospel. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 7, verse number 7 says, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. He asked for a Bible. The Lord gave him a Bible. And he said he doesn't even know how that inmate, that prisoner, got to him. And the prisoner didn't even come and say, Oh, are you looking for a Bible or anything? He just came. So that prisoner was also hearing from the Lord. And just came and pulled out the Bible and said, This is what you wanted. So the Lord spoke to him. God works through us. Amen. Gave him the Bible. It was in English. He thought, I can't read this. So many times he said, I can't read this. And the Holy Spirit said to him, read. And he, the third time. And he said, okay, let me just open. He opened a random page. And he began to read. And he understood what he read. He said he thought it was, he was really mad now. Because the word of God, remember the word of God is spirit. Amen. So that what he read, the scripture which he read, was exactly his encounter <laughs> that he had with the Lord. Amen. And he said, he asked a brother in the prison who could read English, said, is this what it's saying? And the man was shocked and said, yes, how did you understand? He said, I don't know, I can just hear. So 1 Corinthians 12, 10 says, to another, these are the gifts of the Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. So he had the ability to interpret and understand English. Amen. And you know, his sins were washed away. He said he felt forgiven. He felt like his sins were gone away. And that's what the word of God tells us. You know, in Hebrews. Let's have a look at Hebrews. So when you come to Jesus, you're now a new person. So even now, when we speak of him, that's why I call him Pastor Afshin Javed. I don't I may have to make reference to him as a his bull or whatever he was. Because if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. So he's a new creature. He's forgiven. Hebrews 10, 17 says, And their sins and iniquities I will remember no more. So even though we make, make reference of it here, yeah, but Jesus doesn't remember them, and neither should we remember them. When we see him, we shouldn't look and say, oh, this guy was such a wicked guy, hanging people. That is cancelled off the record. Amen. And I just want to close. Remember next week we're going to look at how he actually came out of prison <laughs> and how he actually started preaching the gospel openly. Amen. That is just and his family and what happened. Remember, he was from quite a, a strong uh, Muslim background, extreme Muslim background. So it wasn't easy for him, but he overcame. We'll share that next week. But let's have a look at this in closing, the scripture, which he said, imagine, he just randomly opened the Bible. Maybe you've done that before. Randomly opened the Bible and say, Lord, speak to me. He didn't even know about that. He just opened the page and that scripture came. This is Isaiah 6 verse 1. He says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face. With twain he covered his feet. And with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me. For I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one seraphim unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth, and said, Lo, this has touched your lips, and your iniquity is taken away, and your sin is purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Yea, I am, send me. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. See indeed and perceive not. So he said, Who will go? And he said, Yeah, I am Lord, send me. And he said, Go. And then, part three, we're going to look at how he went. Because he was still in prison. How did he get out of prison? And what happened from there? His family was against him. Amen. But, you know, God is so amazing. If you are blessed by this testimony, just subscribe, uh, leave a comment, a like. And every Tuesday, I bring testimonies, right? Every Wednesday, I bring the Word of God. And every Friday, I answer your questions. If you've got any questions on this Christian walk, on the Word of God, by the power of the Holy Ghost, by His wisdom, I'll bring you the answers. Okay, so have a blessed day. Uh, if you're not yet born again, you haven't received Jesus Christ, or you're unsure, say the prayer to follow. Amen, the prayer of salvation. Have a blessed day. I love you so much, but remember the Father, He loves you even more. Amen. God bless. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. If you haven't received salvation in Jesus Christ, say this prayer with me right now. Just say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Be the Lord of my life. I believe that you died for me and that you rose from the dead. I declare that I am saved and born again. 
I am your child. In Jesus' name, amen. Subscribe and follow on social media platforms, on YouTube, The Word of Truth, Jason Paul Pullen, on all your podcasting platforms, The Word for Today with Jason Pullen, Spotify, Audible, Acast, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can also follow us on Instagram, The Word of Truth JC. You can follow us on Facebook, The Word of Truth JC. You can follow us on Twitter at The Word of underscore Truth. There's free books available in the link below as well as on Amazon.com. If you'd like to partner with me, you can go to PayPal, paypal.me forward slash jpj or via scroll jpjs at gmail.com. Send an email, the word of truth publications at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Amen.